So we haven't talked about Anthony Richardson over here in quite a while, and rightfully so, all things considered, right? He's going through the shoulder surgery. We're making an unlikely playoff run. Not that we made it, but obviously we overachieved, so there was a lot to talk about there. We wanted to let the man heal in silence, right? I say the man, not the boy, despite the fact that he's 21 years of age, because me, at 27 years old, if I ever met Anthony Richardson in person, I would look up to him like, uh, you know, one of the founding fathers. I mean, it'd be one of these, you know, this is a larger-than-life figure, right? But... I could not help but think about him this weekend while watching the wild card games. Great weekend of football, of course, but specifically the Chiefs and the Ravens. Now, when Anthony Richardson has been asked about who he admires at the quarterback position, who inspires him, who he aspires to be like, we've heard him say three names. We've heard him say Tom Brady, which we like, Cam Newton, and Lamar Jackson. Tom Brady specifically because of the work ethic out of the draft. I absolutely loved that quote out of Anthony Richardson. You have to understand, Tom Brady's work ethic to some degree was rooted in the fact that he had no right physically being in the NFL. For Anthony Richardson to view it, like he is, he's one of the most talented quarterbacks physically we've ever seen. For him to work as if he doesn't have any of that talent really sets him up for a future of success. But when he talks about Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson, he shares that he likes those guys. He looks up to those guys because he shares those great physical gifts. Obviously, the ability to run at a high level. Both of them, African-American quarterbacks, getting it done at an MVP level in this league. And by the way, before you try to paint me into a corner, okay, the African-American distinction, that is not my distinction. That's Anthony Richardson's distinction. And it makes sense. Of course, he would look up to those guys. Why would he not? In a position that has been stigmatized, although I think to some degree it's kind of been broken in the past decade, but there's a long history of a stigma around black quarterbacks in this league. So I could totally understand why Anthony Richardson looks at that. But uh, really, besides the point, I don't want to get too far into that because it's really not my place. But, you know, as far as the physical ability goes, this, of course, is a fair and reasonable comparison for Anthony Richardson to compare himself to guys like Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson. But I do got to say, At the end of the year, right, the Colts have those end-of-season press conferences. And while my favorite one is always Chris Ballard's, Anthony Richardson has his or had his this season as well. And he also had an interview on the Colts' YouTube page. It wasn't their official podcast. It was like a nicely produced interview, whatever the heck it was, right? And he was asked in both of those, as you would expect, if he's had time to reflect on how he plays the game of football. And in however many words, they asked him, like, Dude, are you going to fucking slide next year or what, right? Do you feel the need, Anthony, to change the way you play the game of football in this league on any level whatsoever? And much to my surprise and dismay, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase here a little bit, but he essentially said, no, no, I don't have to change the way I play the game. He said he does not have to play any differently at all. And the reason he said that, according to him, was essentially that the way he's played, the instincts, and the way he approaches the game has not only got him this far, the number four pick in the draft, but is really the reason the team drafted him. And you know what? I mean, he's not technically wrong. I can't say it's a bad point by Anthony, but you do look at the guys he compares himself to in Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson. And I know people hate to hear this type of point when it comes to these running quarterbacks, but you do have to acknowledge the reality that Cam Newton's career was derailed by injury in part due to the physical nature, particularly running the football, that he gravitated towards, particularly his shoulder, may I add, right? And then Lamar Jackson himself, who obviously amazing, right? Before this season, was unable to finish the last two. And you couple that with the fact that our last franchise quarterback, he who shall not be named, was a bit of a brute himself and didn't shy away from contact either. And all of a sudden, he ended up retiring, and you can't help but think to yourself, excuse me, Anthony, that's not what we want to hear. We don't want to hear you say you're going to do what you did this year. You couldn't finish a game this year, okay? And I don't say to put him down, but the reality is, as a Colts fan, that is alarming to me. It's incredibly alarming to me. My PTSD triggers, and I just can't help that, right? Now, Lamar is a guy that many Colts fans wanted this team to pursue this past offseason, and I was on record saying there is no way in hell that Lamar Jackson was worth two first-round picks and 40-plus million dollars, maybe the contract by itself, but the two first-round picks to go with it, please. 
not for a guy that was one and two in the the playoffs. This, of course, was last season. Now he's two and three in the playoffs. He had better generally been lackluster, right? So we're going to give up two first round picks, leverage your entire future for a guy who had not been able to prove himself in the playoffs. To me, it made no sense. And what we saw this weekend was evidence of why, in my opinion, I was right. Now, it's not to say Lamar Jackson is not spectacular. I think he's one of the top seven quarterbacks in the game of football. I would say I think seven, eight top in that. I mean, that's got to be safe. Some people would argue into the top three. I wouldn't be willing to go that far, but he is a spectacular talent. But what we witnessed this week in the Chiefs and Ravens game were the levels that there are to great quarterback play in this league. And Anthony Richardson, who loves to compare himself to guys like Lamar Jackson, should take notice of what he saw because the great misconception amongst NFL fans far and wide, and is even leaking, in my opinion, into some of the players' opinions, is that this league is dominated by running quarterbacks. That is not true at all, okay? There is a distinction to be made and a distinction that will never be disproven or avoidable. It will always come to fruition. And Anthony Richardson needs to make sure he understands that distinction as he moves forward in his career. So today we're going to talk about what that distinction is and why I'm optimistic, albeit a bit cautiously so, that Anthony Richardson will play QB the right way in this league moving forward. And we're going to use what we saw this weekend in that wild card game as our use case for this specific lesson. But before we do that, of course, I have to introduce myself. My name is Justin. This right here is the Ride in the Bench Colts podcast. As always, I ask anyone watching on YouTube, go ahead, shoot it a like. Going to help me get out to as many Colts fans as humanly possible if you're listening to the audio version. Perhaps shoot a five-star review. Let the people know how much you like the show. Subscribe if you want to be a part of the journey moving forward. The goal is 3,000 subscribers by next season, the 2024-2025 season. We'll see if we could get there, but most importantly, let's enjoy the show. Let's enjoy the offseason. We got a long ways to go, and we're taking it slow over here, baby. It's the slow burn. I am making sure that we milk this content as long as we possibly can. There's a reason I'm not talking about free agency and the draft and all that stuff yet, because if we talk about it now, in my opinion, we're just talking about talking. We got to keep talking about it as the offseason goes on. The time will come. Don't worry about it, guys. I promise. But let's get back into it, and I want to start with that misconception that running quarterbacks rule this league because it could not be farther from the truth. People oftentimes confuse a QB that can run for a running quarterback. What you saw on Sunday was the difference between those two things and why a guy that can run but is a passer first will always and forever rule this league because one of the QBs you witnessed in that Chiefs Ravens game is leading an offense that was having an off year and the other was having an MVP campaign on the best offense in football yet the one having an off year was able to chop up arguably the best defense in football and the one that was an MVP was unable to get anything going at all with any form of consistency, albeit against a very, very great defense in the Kansas City Chiefs as well, right? One of those guys, the one having the off year, threw the ball 39 times and completed nearly 80% of his passes. The other threw the ball 37 times, and the consensus around all of the talking heads, and rightfully so, may I add, was that he threw the ball too much in that game. Now, my question for you is this. If your QB is great and he is the MVP and is in a battle with Patrick Mahomes to go to the fucking Super Bowl, his job as a quarterback, whether you want to believe it or not, before it is to run, is primarily to throw the football. You got all types of other guys on the team to run. Not saying a guy shouldn't run, but his job is to throw the football and distribute it to his weapons as a quarterback. To throw the ball 37 times in that game, the talk coming out of it should never be that he threw the ball too much. 37 times, too much. But of course, the reason that was are because these are the layers to the game that can't be told through the numbers in yardage 
alone because those who perhaps didn't watch the game or don't fully understand what it is that they were looking at will say that Lamar had more passing yards than Patrick Mahomes. They both only had one touchdown, and that's fine. If that helps you sleep at night, so be it. If you want to go with that narrative, that's fine. You could be on the wrong side, and I'll be on the right side all day. There's no one who likes a victory lap like me, right? But anyone who understands the game of football on a, at a, even a, a, a decent level and watch that game knows damn well that Lamar was outclassed by Patrick Mahomes throughout the majority of that game. That's not to say he had no moments whatsoever. I mean, Lamar Jackson is spectacular. Again, I don't do all this to put him down. I promise, by the way, this is going to go back to Anthony Richardson. Don't don't, don't leave me now, right? Uh, I mean, Lamar makes movement in the pocket look very, very easy. But in the playoffs, it always, always comes down to the quarterback play. And it always comes down to which quarterback can make more plays. And that will always be the guy who completes the passes when it matters most. And while Pat Mahomes was able to complete passes at all levels of the field with consistency and on third down, Lamar, on the other hand, was unable to consistently get it done. Everything took too long to develop. He was holding the ball too long. And if he couldn't get the ball down the field, he was unable to consistently take what it was that Kansas City was giving him. And yes, of course, you could make the case that Zay Flowers lost him the game. And yes, you can say Mahomes only scored 17, but I can guarantee you this. If the Ravens had scored 24, Mahomes would have scored 27. And it's because he's able to make it happen all day, every day, every game, every single time he's able to get it done with his arm as a passer down the field, underneath, in the flat, Pat Mahomes is going to consistently get it done for you and make the right decision as a quarterback. Lamar, not so much. And now is when we bring it back to Anthony Richardson because here's the good news. Hem and Lamar are not the same quarterback, despite the fact that everyone would just typecast them as two athletic freaks that are running quarterbacks with big arms. They are different for two reasons, and both of them are a notch in the favor of Anthony Richardson. Number one, Anthony Richardson, unlike Lamar, is a natural thrower of the football. You can just see it in the way the ball comes out of his hands. Those of you who have been watching football for some time, I think might understand what I'm getting at when I say that, right? Things like ball placement, touch, and dare I even say accuracy on all levels of the field come much more naturally to Anthony than they do to Lamar. Not saying that technically he's at a higher level right now, but I'm saying when Lamar came into the league, he was not half the passer that Anthony Richardson was. And if you were to just take the trajectory in due time, Anthony Richardson should be light years away from Lamar Jackson as a passer, in my humble opinion. That's not to say Lamar can't throw. He has a huge arm, but there is a difference between being able to throw and being a great passer. We would know this very well as Colts fans. Peyton Manning never had the best arm in football. He never had the strongest arm in the league. But he was an excellent passer. He was precise. Ball placement, recognition, taking what the defense give you. All of these things are something beyond just the physical raw talent in your arm that are going to help you get the job done and complete passes in this league. And number two, two, <laughs> which kind of goes with number one, which I've always been impressed with the most, and it was the thing that sold me on Anthony Richardson because it's just much more my style I think it's a much more sustainable style of play in this league. Anthony Richardson is a pocket passer first. And I said this in the preseason, and a lot of people didn't believe me because maybe, I don't know, they, they hadn't seen him in training camp and they just, I, I don't know. It's just hard to imagine the most athletic quarterback to ever come play the game of football is a pocket passer. But make no mistake, Anthony Richardson is fully committed to getting it done from within the pocket. Many Florida fans, many people don't know this, by the way, complained about him not running the football enough in college and realistically with the Colts this season when it wasn't a design run by Shane Steichen it didn't really feel like AR was trying to run the ball all that much when he was dropping back to pass he was dropping back to pass I mean a couple times maybe not but overall by and large he was trying to get that thing done from the pocket and you know maybe right my entire episode premise was off based off the statement I just made. Maybe it's Steichen that needs to learn from Lamar Jackson. But either way, there is no doubt that Anthony Richardson is going to have to change the way he approaches the game just a little bit. Go down, buddy, right? Go down. And let's hope that when he says he doesn't think he has to change the way he plays, that it isn't as cut and dry of a statement 
as I'm making it out to be, because that's very possible. Listen, I've been prone to perhaps take things a little literally here and there. I can't help myself. I'm a little worried about our franchise quarterback. I'm not going to hide it from you, right? Because with the immense amount of growth that we saw Anthony Richardson have as a passer in a short amount of time, remember, right? For all you guys complaining about his accuracy, Anthony Richardson was supposed to be like a sit him down for two years type of project. It was clear and obvious very quickly that that was not the case. The Colts had been keeping a secret for some time. Anyone who had saw him play at training camp knew this. Anthony Richardson was big time and way better than anyone let, was led on to believe, coming out of the draft at least, right? So I guarantee you that if Shane Steichen were to treat him like a passer, he would shock a lot of people as a passer if they were to consistently treat him like one. It wouldn't shock us because we're paying attention to the team but by and large, everyone views him as a running quarterback. For him to have a career with the Colts moving forward, because it's only going to go one of two ways. This guy is either going to be a spectacular quarterback for us, the franchise guy and a perennial top five type dude every year, or it's going to be injury ridden. For it to be the former, they're going to have to treat him like a pocket passer, and they're going to have to be sparing with how often they run him. And I hope that this weekend was a lesson in what that is, because the two teams in the Super Bowl are not the teams with the running quarterbacks. They're the teams with the mobile quarterbacks that look to pass first. And that, my friends, is what the league and what the quarterback position is about, will always be about, and don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. But that right there is the episode. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll see you guys soon. I'm still working on some other stuff. I'm trying to get like, I don't know, like three a week or something like that during the offseason. We'll see if I can keep that pace. But until next time, my name is Justin. This right here was the Ride on the Bench Colts podcast. And as always, baby, go Colts.